there she is. Wow. The Knowles Beach. <laughs> Hello, I'm Dave <laughs> and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the new forest. Thanks for joining us. Now as you can tell it's coming out for Christmas. I'm often asked which is probably the best walk to go on round about Christmas time and I thought I'd choose this one. We're at Acres Down, about two and a half miles to the northwest of Lyndhurst and we're going to be doing a, a roughly four and a half mile circular route, mainly on gravel tracks through woodland, over some heathland, and fingers crossed, we're going to see if we can find what is possibly, what's certainly the biggest beech tree in the New Forest, and possibly the UK. <laughs> so do join us. Well, I parked my car at the Forestry Commission car park at Acres Down. I put a little map on screen to show you how to get there, but find Emery Down and then head north and look out for a sign for Acres Down coming off the road to the left. And then the actual car park is just past the Acres Down farm shop. So we're going to start off by following a cycle track heading westwards. Let's go. Well, it's a beautiful winter's morning. I'm filming what 17th of December, so we're nearly at the uh, shortest day. Fingers crossed the light is going to be okay for filming. A little bit of cloud about, but um, from time to time the sun does keep popping through. Now, a few people have asked me about this walk in the past, say, asking me to do a, a film because although it's a lovely area to go, you can get lost quite easily. So for this film, I'm going to be doing a lot of, um, it's almost going to be like a guided tour. So I'll be giving a few more directions than I, I normally do. So as I said, we're heading along this little uh, cycle track. I'll pan round to show you where I'm going. Well, one of the reasons that I've chosen this walk as a good walk to do at Christmas and over the winter period is that it's a good firm track for most of the way, a cycle track and hopefully there's not going to be too much mud. <laughs> Well now the first sign to look out for as we're coming along this track is for cycle track sign number 97 which is just by me here. So instead of continuing west we are going to go right and head north down this track here and this is eventually going to take us to Hart Hill. I oh, apologise if I'm puffing and panting away. Slightly uphill bit now. So we now come off the gravel track which goes to the left. We're going to carry on up this track to the right and at the very top on the brow of the hill is Hart Hill and we should get some terrific views from up there. As you can see on the right hand side, been a lot of forestry work, a lot of the uh, conifers have been cut back. <laughs> I've made it to the top of Hart Hill. Oh, I'm so unfit. I'm supposed to be doing a, a 10k trail race in a month's time. Not so sure now. But let me show you the view from up here. It really is quite. Uh, stunning and this is looking south and uh, I know it's a little bit cloudy at the moment the sun does keep popping through from time to time and 
it is quite a beautiful place to just come and reflect and I'm pleased to say just by me here there's a, a bench which I think I'll be sitting down and having a little rest on I just noticed something down here on the left looks like a little memorial what does that say Joan Stubbs died 1968 only 42 years old oh, that's a shame right well I know it's early on in the walk but we're gonna have a little rest nonetheless well I'm pleased to say the Sun has come out now and I don't know if you can see the rainbow in front of me and a little bit of blue sky as well okay so We've uh, continued going north past Hart Hill and you need to look out for this trig point that's on my left here, looks a little bit unloved. And once you've found that, we now need to start heading westwards. Uh, continuing to head west. So we've got Stonard Wood on our right. A few New forest ponies grazing away. There was a shower about an hour ago, so they've got a, a little damp on top, but with their thick winter coats, they're nice and cozy underneath there. And uh, another one there, lovely in the, the winter sunshine. We've come through stone hardwood, I'm delighted to say sun's come back out again and we're on a I suppose you describe it as a, a ridge and uh, we'll pop over and have a look at the view over there in a second but just slowly panning round that's the direction we're going to continue going and then just to my left here we've got a pony pound which uh, as regular viewers will know are used in the pony drift but uh, Let's have a little wander over onto the, well this is looking north and we will get some terrific views and this particular area that I'm looking at now we've actually done a walk in the past if you look up the walk for Andrew's Mare and uh, as I say we did a, a lovely walk there but beautiful open heathland you can probably hear the A31 in the background. <laughs> One of the great things about this walk, four and a half miles, we're not going to see a, another car, we're not going to uh, cross a road and in fact we're not going to see a building. It really is nature at its best. Okay, well, we're about as far west as we're going to go along this ridge. I hope you're following all this. <laughs> well, if I turn the camera around and show you where we've come from, so that's the, the track that we've come down. So what you need to do is to look out for this rather magnificent beech tree. It's about six metre girth. Although actually it's quite a tiddler compared to the one that hopefully we're going to see later on. Okay, so once you've seen that beech tree, just go on for a few yards and then look for uh, a gate on the left hand side. There's a, another couple of lovely um, beech trees there as well. I love the way the low sun is coming through the, some of the shadows you get from the trees. And we're going to follow this gravel track through this gate here and start heading south.
continuing to head southwards. Just show you where I've uh, come from. Just looking back up there. So on the right hand side is the Puck Pits enclosure. Quite an old one established in the 1700s, although those um, conifers there are fairly recent. And then just panning over in this glorious winter sunshine. That's looking over to the Highland Water enclosure and a lot of the conifers there in the far distance, those would have been planted in the 1930s and 1940s. <laughs> Very festive! <laughs> oh dear. Now that's what I ought to be doing with Logan. <laughs> now, we've just come down this uh, gravel track and we're now rejoining the cycle track and there's a post right next to me. So we're going to carry on down here. Now on the right if you look on a very old map you'll see that there was a stag park once here. There were three stag parks in the New Forest. The other two were at um, or Rhinefield and Denny Wood. It's thought they were established in the 17th century basically to hold red deer and this one was very much a rectangular shape. It's very very difficult to, to make out any ditch. I mean, if I just turn around there is a, a ditch alongside this track but I think that's actually part of the um, enclosure bank. Although if I look deep into the woodland there I can just make out a a little bit of a, a bank so perhaps that could be it. So as I say about 200 yards further west from post 100 I need to look out for post 101. So what we're not going to do is carry along the main route there. We're now going to almost double back on ourselves, turn left and head eastwards through this gate here that's going to take us through into another enclosure. I'm going to follow this track for some time and we're going to be looking out for a stream. That's our next destination. Continuing to head eastwards, another cycle post look out for number 148. I say we're continuing in this direction, so uh, ignore <laughs> those poor girls with their dogs. I think they're lost now. Anyway, ignore this track that goes to the right and I'll oh, try not to get the sun in the screen. Oh, <laughs> so we're going to carry along here. So we're actually in the uh, the Home Hill enclosure, which is quite an old one, uh, originally established in 1670 as a small enclosure and then a much larger enclosure, which included the smaller one, was established in 1815. Now this track, if we follow it all the way through, will take us to Milliford Bridge and we've done a walk there, so if you haven't uh, seen that one, do check it out. But say, so we're continuing along here, and we're going to look out for, say, a stream. And uh, once we've found that, we change direction again. Well, this is the stream that I was looking for, just by me here. It's called uh, Bagshot Gutter. In fact, the um, source of it isn't too far away from, from here. And this will eventually flow into the Highland Water and then eventually join the Limington River and then flow out to the sea at Limington. Anyway, the reason we've been looking out for this, we now need to watch out for the very next grassy track that heads off to the left in a northerly direction. And it's about 50 yards further on. 
and here we are so this is the the grassy track that goes to the left so don't continue carrying along the uh, cycle track we're going to head up here now okay i said we weren't going to get muddy today it might get a little moist underfoot just for a, a few yards or so we have had a a lot of rain in the forest recently but actually if we keep to the, the left here we're going to be all right and what we're going to do is head up and in fact i can see there's a wooden gate into an enclosure and it's called the Knowles enclosure in the far distance we're now in the Knowles enclosure beautiful beaches in here now Logan and I are going to go off piece just for a second so this isn't part of the walk we're going to head deep into woodland behind us to see if we can find the Knowles beach I'll tell you a bit more about it if I can find it I've got a map so I've got a rough idea where it is so wish us luck uh, just making my way through this dense woodland a rough idea where I am <laughs> oh there she is wow the Knowles beach girth of well over seven and a half meters and she's got to be three four hundred years old if not more beautiful let's see if I get a little bit nearer without falling over I have to say she's in pretty good nick as well okay a few of the branches on the the left hand side there have broken off but her crown is fine you just have to stand and admire something this old and give it so much respect I know the uh, the nightwood oak gets all the uh, the attraction from all the tourists not too far away from here with its own car park and what have you but this lady here very much I say stuck out in the middle of woodland with just some other beaches and silver birch for company very much left to her own we'll get a little bit closer I don't know if this is coming across on the camera the sheer enormity of this tree and, uh, let's see if we can cross to the other side Look around. Try not to get the uh, the sun. Oops, in the picture. Just come on this side. Oh. You just have to say stand and admire, don't you? Just trying to take her all in in a wood that's got some fairly old beech trees in it but she still does stand out on her own quite stunning oh, I'm so glad I found her I really am wow <laughs> wasn't that brilliant I'm so glad I found her anyway back to uh, our original walk in the Knowles enclosure as I said there's quite a few beech trees here the thing about beech trees normally if they're left to their own they'll grow for 200 250 years and they tend to grow in a sort of straight uh, line as it were pollarded beeches which the knolls was those are a cut back at around about the sort of two meter level and the idea is to um, allow them to grow more branches and it's thought that it was done uh, well to create more wood uh, and um, for charcoal in particular uh, but it was made illegal uh, by an act of parliament in 1698 I think it was because at the time the government wanted all trees to to grow dead straight and have nice thick trunks um, so that they could be used to build ships basically so that helps us sometimes with the 
a aging of the, uh, some of these trees, although quite a few were pollarded after that date. Uh, but once they've been pollarded, it tends to uh, slow back the growth quite a bit um, while the crown is, is developed. So that's why pollarded trees tend to grow or tend to live for a lot longer. Anyway, that's the nature program finished with. So we're going to continue through here. Now, don't worry that you might get lost. If you keep heading north, what we're going to be looking for is a really obvious track. And I found the track. So that's the little mini track that we've come through. And you can see there's other people here, so we're not alone, which is great. And this is the slightly uh, larger track that we're we're now hitting and we're going to carry on again it's very much a sort of northwesterly direction and now we're on a firm track that will eventually take us all the way back to the uh, the car park <laughs> puffing away again up another uphill section so we followed that track, as I said, going uphill onto acres down, a few little muddy bits, but it wasn't insurpassable, but well worth the effort because the views from up here are stunning. They really are. So if I just uh, pan round. So this is looking uh, northwards. I hope this view is coming across. It really is quite, quite beautiful. And on a day like today, really makes you feel good to be alive. It really does. It's a little bit of a breeze. So we're going to continue heading northwards. And then there's just one little bit of a track that I need to point out to you to look out for. And then the rest of the walk's nice and easy to follow. And here we are right on the top of Hakers Down. So that's looking sort of south and then just gently pan round they mainly gorse and died back bracken and the odd dew forest pony now we're not going to follow that track directly northwards i want you to look out for one that uh, just bears left that sort of winds downhill i'll put a map up on screen and uh Literally then it's just a case of following or keeping on this exact path all the way back to the car park. Oh, it really is beautiful down here. Even though we're in the middle of winter, you've still got different types of color of brown or different shades of brown, if you see what I mean. As well as a fair bit of uh, greenery with the evergreen. But even on a day like today it's uh, very very pretty and uh, the sun as I mentioned before being so low you get some lovely shadows it makes it quite magical on occasions right our final challenge of the day there's an easy way up on the left and a hard way up on the right come on Logan <laughs> Let's prove to ourselves that we can do this. Are you going to help your old dad by pulling me up? Come on then. Go on. Keep going. Oh, good boy. Oh, really made it. Oh. Oh. Yes. And hopefully the car will be in the car park just on the other side but uh, it just gives us one more chance to look back at the view quite beautiful well folks we've come to the end of our walk we thought we'd do the end piece at the top of Hart Hill we hope you enjoyed it if you did please give us a like and a thumbs up and if you haven't already done so please do subscribe and also do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. We often put uh, extra photographs and bits of news on that as well. <laughs> We're off to find somewhere for some uh, hot soup. 
and as it, if you're watching this before Christmas we both wish you a Merry Christmas a pleasant festive period and a Happy New Year and let's hope that 2021 is going to be a lot better than 2020 it has been a tough one for a lot of people so until we meet again thanks for watching and cheerio <laughs> you're not impressed with that hat are you <laughs> good boy